Percentage increase and decrease is quite hard for a lot of people to understand. I think the easiest way to tackle it though is to look at the way numbers can be increased and decreased by using fractions and then converting those fractions to percentages. So first off, can we convert a fraction to a percentage? If I give you a fraction like 4 fifths, what's that as a percentage? Well, there's a few ways to do it. The easiest way is to say I need to multiply by 100, okay, because that will give me a number that then as I write as a percentage, percentage means out of 100. So if the answer is kind of divided by 100, it makes sense we have to multiply by 100 to make up for it, okay. Now, easy way to do this with any numbers, we know how to multiply fractions already. This is basically 100 over 1, isn't it? So you do top times top to make top, bottom times bottom to make bottom. So 4 times 100 is 400, 5 times 1 is 5. So all I really need to do here is work out what is 400 divided by 5. Now I know my 5 times tables, 5 eighths are 40, so 5 eighties will be 400. So that gives me 80 there. Okay. Another method that you could use would be to say, let's change 4 fifths, whoops, let's change 4 fifths into a fraction out of 100. And this is a good method if you've got a nice round number on the bottom here that you know is a factor of 100. You can say, how did I make this one bigger? Only by multiplying and dividing, remember? Well, I multiplied by 20, so I have to multiply the top by 20. And that gives me 80 out of 100, which I know is 80%. That method's probably easier, but it only works nicely for numbers that are factors of 100. As soon as you've got something awkward there, let's imagine we had something like, we we're trying to convert 3 sevenths, and we said, well, what's that out of 100? And you're gonna get stuck here wondering what to multiply the seven by exactly, because it's not gonna be a whole number, so it gets a bit awkward. So with a tricky one, if you're only going to learn one method, a method that works well for everything would be just be to say multiply the thing by 100. That will be the percentage that you have. Okay, so 3 times 100 is 300. What's 300 divided by 7? Well, let's find out. Put it in one of these. 7 into 30 goes 4, and maybe 2, and I've got a 2, or maybe 6, and I can put a decimal here to hold my decimal. If you know, but know how to divide by decimals, you just keep the decimals lined up, and you can put as many zeros there as placeholders. Uh, so 7 into 60, I've got 8, and maybe 4. Now I can keep going here for as long as I like until it ends. It's not going to end, so at some point I'm going to just decide whether to round it off and say, look, 42.9 or so. It's obviously going to keep on going, but I've got myself a rough answer, okay, to one decimal place. So this is a method that's going to work all the time. Multiply by 100, and then divide by what's down here. Alright, so now we know how to convert fractions into decimals. How do we work that increase and de decrease as a percentage? Well, if I had four apples, and then I later on had five apples, and I asked you what the percentage increase was, all right, the percentage increase. The nice thing about fractions is that fractions compare amounts to other amounts. So I could say here, well, I've got one extra apple, all right, what's that compared to what you had? Well, I had four, so now I've got an extra one, so I've got an extra quarter of what I used to have, haven't I? So you could say, I had... I've gone up by one and a quarter, all right? I've still got my four apples, that's my one, my whole, what I had, but now I've got a quarter of that again, okay? Now one and a quarter, that's the same as five quarters, isn't it? So if you wanted to convert that into a percentage as an increase, you could say, all right, five quarters as a percentage or one and a quarter as a percentage is going to be 125%. Now, how did I do that so quickly? I know that a quarter of 100 is 25. So I know that a quarter as a percentage is 25%, and one as a percentage is 100%. So I've got 125%. So I could say that I've got 125% increase here. I could also say that I've multiplied it by five and a quarter, okay? Now what do I mean by that? Well, if you take four, I need a better pen here. If you take 4 and you multiply it by 
five quarters, what do you get? Well, these fours are going to cancel, aren't they? You get five, which is exactly what we now have. All right, let's look at how to go back the other way, though. What would be the percentage decrease if I had five apples and now I've only got four? Well, here you're looking at it as a percentage of five. You're coming from here to go to there. So you've got to say what percentage is four out of five. So really you just want to say what is four fifths as a percentage, all right? That's one we can easily see and we've already worked out and it's 80%. Okay, so here we could say this is an 80% decrease but what number would we have to multiply five for, by to get four? Let's think about it. Multiply five by something to get four. Well, we've multiplied it by 80%. What's 80% as a fraction? Four fifths. So we basically just said, give me four fifths of what I got now. That gives you four, doesn't it? Whoops, four fifths. Now, what am I getting at here? Well, there's a couple of things going on, which it's really handy to take note of. If you try and compare these two numbers, going up 125 and going down 80%, they don't really look like they've got anything much in common, do they? Whereas if you compare these numbers, multiplying by 5 quarters and multiplying by 4, four fifths, they look really highly related. One is the reciprocal of the other. In other words, it's just being flipped upside down. And this is really handy to know. It also explains why a lot of adults have a lot of trouble making these sorts of conversions. I'll give you an example. People often think that if they've increased something by 50% and then they've changed their mind and say, no, 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 I want to put it back to the size that it was. They say, oh, I'll just find 50% of what I have now. And that's not correct. Let's have a look at why. Let's say we start with 100 of something. Perhaps we have 100 apples now. If we increase by 50%, how many apples are we going to have? Well, we're going to take 50% of what we had, that's 50, and add them on. So we're going to have 150 apples. All right, what do we need to do to reduce it back? Well, here, what did we multiply by? We took half, didn't we, because 50% is half. We took a half of those and we added it to what we had, which was one whole lot of what we had. So we basically multiplied by one and a half, didn't we? To add, to increase by 50%. We wanted 150% of it. Now, multiplying by one and a half, that's the same thing as multiplying by three halves, okay? So what's the same thing over here? Do you have to halve this number? No, halving it's gonna give you 75. That's not gonna give you the right thing. What you need to multiply by is two-thirds. So multiplying by two-thirds will take you back. Now what's two-thirds as a percentage? It's 66 and two-thirds percent. So that's the decrease that you need over here. So if you increase by 150%, sorry, increase by 50%, which is basically to find 150% of something, a 50% increase, Then to get it back, you'd need a 66 and two thirds percent decrease. Now, an example that's like this, but is really relevant in finance, and for shop owners everywhere, is looking at the GST, which is the goods and services tax. Now, the GST says that whatever price you want to sell something for, you need to add 10% to that, and then put that on the price tag so that the customer is paying 10% extra. So, if we had something like Perhaps we were going to sell a t-shirt for $20. That's without the GST. How much do we need to sell it for with the GST? Well, you need to find 10% of this. 10% is 1 tenth. And the easiest way to find that is move the decimal point and it'll be $2, won't it? So you need to add $2. So it'll cost $22 with the GST, okay? Now we've added $2, but if you looked at it as what we multiplied it by, we multiplied it by one and a tenth, didn't we? Which is the same as a 
11 tenths, which is the same as 110%. Okay? But what if we knew the price with GST and we wondered how much it was without GST and we wanted to actually decrease that amount to get back? Can we just take 10% off this? And the answer is no, we can't. Because now this amount here, if we take 10% of that, we're going to get $2.20. Okay, if we take $2.20 off, we're going to end up with less than $20, so it's not going to take us back properly. Now, the easiest way to understand this one is to actually look at some blocks. Imagine that the price without the GST is built out of 10 parts. Why 10 parts? Well, because the GST is like one of those parts, and we have to add it on the top. If you then want to find what this price is without the GST, you need to look at how many parts it's made up of now. It's made up of 10 parts. This and one part that, so there's 11 parts there altogether. So if you want to find what fraction the white bits are, it's actually 10 elevenths, isn't it? Which is exactly what we've been talking about. You can flip this upside down and multiply by 10 elevenths, which makes sense because there's 10 parts normal price for every one part GST. So what's this as a fraction? Well, you need to take your calculator and find that out, or you could actually do it with the method that we used in the beginning. We could say what's 10 elevenths as a percentage, multiply it by 100. Okay, what's 10 one hundredths? That's 1,000. Now we need to do 1,000 divided by 11. How do we do it? Let's do one of these. 1,000 divided by 11. Now, if it's not gonna go exactly, we can put a decimal point and some extra placeholder zeros after this so that we can get a nice, accurate answer. All right, 11 doesn't go into 10, but it goes into 100, nine times, one left over. It doesn't go into 10, and we keep our decimals lined up, but it goes into 100, nine times, one left over. That same thing is gonna keep on happening. It doesn't go into 10, but it goes into 100, nine times. This is going to repeat over and over. So if we want to know approximately, as a decimal or as a percentage, we want 90.9, if we want to round it off, we need a 90.9% decrease. And that doesn't look like a very round figure when this one was increased by 10%. But the fractions are really neat, very tidy. They're just the upside down or reciprocal of one another.